Jordan, first things first, congratulations on the move. This has to be so exciting for you to be joining the NWSL and OL Reign. But I do want to go back just a little bit um, because I remember speaking to you uh, quite a few years ago before you left to join PSG. And there was a lot of hype and rightfully so what you were doing with the national program and also becoming the first Canadian player to turn pro at a high school. Can you take me back a little bit to the memories you had of that time getting ready to go play in Europe? Yeah, for me, it was a very hard decision um, between going pro versus going to university. And I felt like the path was very one-sided to most kids would go into university straight out of high school. Um, so it was definitely a hard decision for me. And I also, I thought of university as like a very solid step for me and something like I considered school very important. So it was like something I always wanted to do, whether it was now or in the future. Um, so that was kind of where my decision got a little bit harder, but I knew for as far as like my football side of things going professionally would help me advance quicker. So for me, yeah, it was definitely a hard decision. I had the support of uh, my family and friends, of course. Um, and then it was kind of, I knew I wanted to get out into Europe, um, kind of see that that side of the game. Um, and then some options came about and PSGs looked like they would develop me the way I needed to be developed at the time. And it was an amazing offer and I couldn't refuse at all. It was a dream come true, really. Um, so to get that as a 17 year old was really astounding. And for me, I graduated in December um, instead of doing a full year into July. So I could head out to Paris six months early um, and prep for the World Cup um, to get the best training. So I left uh, Canada when I was 17 in January. And I actually couldn't even live in an apartment because you have to be 18 in order to live in an apartment. And so I stayed in a hotel for about five months um, before heading into Paris and, and officially signing my contract after those five months of just training with the team. So it was definitely a roller coaster, but it was definitely worth it. Was it scary? Was it lonely? I can't imagine being that age and being on, on my own in the same city as my parents. You're in a different country now. Yeah, it was definitely hard. I think there was, I think it was again ups and downs. And for me, I left my house when I was 15. Like I moved out and moved into Vancouver when I was 15. So I'd always kind of been away from my family. Uh, I got to see them probably every weekend or every second weekend, which was nice. Um, and then of course, like national team camps constantly being called in. So I was always away from them. Um, but it was definitely a harder move because it wasn't like I could call them and they could come out. It was like you could call them and then three days later they could come out if they worked out a flight and everything like that. So they were really supportive through it all, though. But of course, there was there was hard moments. There were sad times. Um, there was homesick moments, of course. Um, but at the end of the day, it was definitely worth the decision. Um, but of course, there's the hard stuff, too. Did PSG playing there, uh, did it did it match any of your expectations? What would you say were some of the ups and downs uh, of playing over in Europe, your experience? Yeah, I think for me, like the biggest thing is like the off field culture and, and the away from home piece is kind of like the hardest part um, of being a professional athlete overseas. Um, and I think a lot of people can speak to that as well. It's, it's very normal. Um, but as far as the on field stuff and even a lot of the off field, like meeting some friends that I would have never gotten to meet and making new connections and being able to train with one of the best teams in the world day in and day out, it was made me develop so much quicker. And I even remember like the first like six months, I was just so uncomfortable. Like I didn't, I lost almost every ball. Like we'd play possession all the time and I would always lose a ball and it was just so defeating and it was just so difficult. And it constantly pushed me out of my comfort zone to do better. And every day you had to show up and be your best version of yourself. So I think in that aspect, it definitely helped me grow as a player, being surrounded by such incredible talent. When did you feel that the, the moment was right for you to make a move, though, and leave PSG and ultimately join OL Reign and NWSL? Yeah, um, it was definitely came quick, um, for sure. Uh, I got into the point where I felt like it was time for me to move on. I just wasn't getting the minutes I wanted, so I was looking for more game time. Um, and so that was kind of like the biggest thing for me at the time. Um, and there was options um, and it just felt right um, with Seattle. It just all kind of stars aligned. You get that gut feeling, I think, as an athlete where you should and shouldn't go. Um, and that was kind of what I followed. And I just trusted my instincts um, and just decided that that was the best place for me to move at the time. Um, and I stand by that for sure. And I'm really loving being in with the team.
Mm -hmm. From a pro perspective, and you mentioned it the minutes there, I think everyone understands, you know, the move just makes sense. Did you at any point, though, think about also what that could mean for the national team? Because I know that we also as fans, as viewers, when we didn't see you at the She Believes Cup, you know, I mean, obviously that was PSG not releasing you. Uh, And then obviously just, you know, how tough it was, even with the Tokyo Olympics and then the expansion of the squad, then you got named to it. Like, did you start to think, wait a second, if I want my national career to also do this, I need to be playing. Yeah, I mean, that was always, it's a part of the long game as well. Like I see my career is just at the beginning. Um, and for me, I know that I wouldn't be where I am now had I not been in, in an environment like PSG. And I knew when I was going into a, a team like PSG that as an 18, 17, 18, 19 year old, I wasn't really going to be playing a lot. And I, I was aware of that. And I knew that going in. And I kind of was just like, I'm going to develop to the best of my abilities within those three years and get the most out of myself in trainings and I knew that the game minutes would be difficult so all along I kind of knew that PSG was more of a a builder a developing kind of step for me Um, and then after that it would move to I need minutes I need game time to show what I've developed and to show what I've learned over these last three and a half years um, with PSG. Yeah, it's a great way, obviously, to think of it. And clearly, you learned a lot. We're excited to see you in the NWSL. We're excited to see you this summer because it's a massive summer uh, for the national team. This is the first time we're also seeing this type of qualification, though, right? Where it's one qualification for World Cup, Olympics, uh, and also the inaugural Gold Cup that that's coming along. What are you expecting? I mean, with you personally, what is it that you want that you're expecting from yourself in this tournament? Um, I think it's similar to what a lot of people on our team are expecting, just being dominant. Um, I think that we're an incredible team. And um, in the past, I feel like people have kind of put us as underdogs. Um, But then we pull out medals almost every Olympics. So I don't know how much longer you can call us underdogs. Um, But I think that we're just looking to have a really dominant performance and kind of show why we have the medal around our neck that we do. Um, so that also goes back to me having dominant performances, scoring some goals, of course. Um, that's what I always like to do in these tournaments. Um, so that's kind of like the main things. And of course, moving forward through those actions, through the team, through everything that's going to come from that. The goal is to win um, and get those qualifications done for the Olympics, for the World Cup at the same time. Um, I think that's everyone's goal and that's where everyone's focus is right now. Do you want to play more on the pitch with Christine St. Clair? Do you want to see that duo work? Or do you feel that you guys are more of of a separate one-two punch? Like, how do you just kind of picture that relationship out on the pitch? No, I mean, we've talked about it a lot uh, between her and I as well. Um, We've played quite a few games in the past uh, together, and we felt like it really started to work. Um, and, And then obviously in more recent times, haven't seen the pitch together as much. But we, we love playing together. Um, we've talked about it quite a bit that I feel like we work very, we're very different players um, in the sense that she's world-class off the front um, and is able to turn and distribute balls. Um, and I love to receive them behind and pull the line back as well. So we kind of have talked about how working on opposites between the two of us would be amazing. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not up to us. So, but we've talked about it. We would definitely enjoy um, playing together. We've always liked uh, being on the field at the same time. Uh, so we, yeah, it's not that we don't like it. We really like it. <laughs> uh, I want to go back to something you said there about, you know, we've had this conversation like so many times, even on One Soccer and on our show. Does Canada get the respect it deserves around the globe and to your point you go and you win olympic medals at three straight games you win the gold medal and then i you know at award ceremony at fifa award ceremony it's like you know people are not really getting named or winning and we're just sitting there going why is canada not getting the respect it deserves do you guys feel the same way or do you just kind of look at your medal and go sorry but the wolf doesn't care about the opinion of sheep Honestly, for us, like we've always been aware that Canada is kind of viewed as this underdog team. Um, and we don't care. Like we care. Like at the end of the day, if they want to underestimate us, go ahead. You know, we're just going to show you out on the field what we can do. And that's we don't have to say anything in the media or voice our opinions about it. Of course, we wouldn't like to be the underdog team. But like at the end of the day, who really cares when you're pulling out medals time after time? We're proving ourselves to be a solid, strong team. And we have the history to show that and represent that. So, I mean, they can say what they want, but I mean, we keep pulling up medals. We're a consistent team who's very solid. Um, And I think going back, of course, like you look at each individual player, 
maybe it's not a star of the world, each individual player, but as a team, we're one of the most solid teams in the world, especially right now after pulling out a gold medal. Mm -hmm. One final one for you. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a different kind of qualification. And now in the past, in order to qualify for the Olympics, you, you know, really just had to win the semifinal. And then we just knew that the two finalists were going to go to the Olympics. Now the winner goes to the Olympics and the second and third place have to play in a playoff. Um, how does that affect, you know, the way you're approaching this or the way you view this type of tournament? Again, having medaled at three straight Olympics and, and now being the gold medalist, you clearly have a target on your back. Does that put any kind of extra pressure on you guys to win it all? Yeah. I mean, the tournament setup definitely adds pressure um, to the, the top three or four teams that are trying to qualify for the World Cup and the Olympics. I think that any time that you have like a one strike versus a two strike, I mean, with this tournament, had we play second, which is obviously not our goal, but in the past, of course, we'd get another shot at qualifying for those two spots in the Olympics. Neither one would be taken up. So of course it adds pressure now that it's kind of like a one shot or else you're done kind of situation. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if we do what we can do, which we know what we can, then it doesn't change too much for us. So I think just we're focused on getting the first place, winning the medal in this tournament as well. Um, and we're not looking too far into the future um, to what could happen if we don't. We're really excited for this tournament. Can't wait to see you in action. Can't wait to see you in action first and foremost, though, in that friendly uh, against South Korea. And once again, congratulations on the career move. We know you're going to do great things with OL Reign. Thank you so much.